the Quinta Crespo market in Caracas, people go about their business as usual, even in the absence of their president. Edison Rios says he has confidence in the vice president and ministers who've been in charge for more than five weeks. They are educated and prepared. The country is in good hands, even though we want Chavez to recover and come back. It was just three months ago that a majority of Venezuelans re-elected their charismatic and controversial president, only to see him come down with cancer yet again. First, the president missed his own inauguration on January the 10th before the National Assembly that you see behind me. And now, his annual message to the nation, delivered instead by the vice president. Clearly, there is an effort to demonstrate that the government is functioning normally amid an opposition campaign to show exactly the opposite. Opponents claim the capital of Venezuela has been transferred to Cuba. Every week we see our political leaders moving to Havana to take decisions that affect us all. We represent half the country, but they refuse to talk to us because they are more interested in receiving orders from the Castro brothers. The ruling Socialist Party insists Chavez's inner circle is simply keeping the president informed in his absence. All of our institutions are working. The people are working. Where is the instability in the hot-headed fantasy world of the opposition? But while the vice president may be filling the president's shoes and assigned at least 20 decrees, he has limited powers. In 90 days, in 120 days, I think that in 90 or 120 days, we'll know what the destiny of the nation is. If President Chavez is declared permanently absent, or he returns the presidency, or he resigns and calls for elections 30 days later, the country cannot stand the situation indefinitely. A country that seems to be taking each day at a time, waiting for a sign from a president who is still fighting for his life. Lucia Newman, Al Jazeera, Caracas.